In this Regen interview, we've been waiting months to speak to uh, the people of Tokelau about what they've been going through with house arrest. Let's go there now. We're in Tokelau crossing to uh, Julie and Say and on the line. How are you today? Hi, good, thank you. Yes, hi, Jason. Thank you. And just to let you know for this broadcast, thank there is a... Thank you for the opportunity to That's okay. For our viewers, there is a large delay. And uh, good to have you both on. Now, can you tell us about uh, the issues taking place in Tokelau? Now, there seems to have been a rather long, uh, well, what's been termed as a house arrest uh, for uh, some of the members of your community. Can you tell us about that, uh, Say? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question, Jason. Um, sorry, I'm a bit overwhelmed that it's, you know, nine months. Well, um, as you may have known, there's about 17 of us individuals that have been um, subjected to this um, house arrest. Uh, initially, there was uh, about uh, seven of us, you know, but circumstances have changed. And so, um, yeah, our children um, have recently joined us, um, Julie's actually, in December, a couple of her kids joined her um, and, and just as of last week um, her younger ones as well as mine joined us and um, so bringing the list to to about 17 um, there's another family on on the other at all um, yeah so there's about 17 of us at the moment so how long has been how arrest. long have you been under house arrest for for us for the initial for the initial people that have been as nine nine months now. Yeah, that is a long long time for Altogether. anyone. Uh, how how have the how has the local community justified this time period? Um, you know, I think to be fair, it'll be good to get their side of the story as well. But um, it's simply because of you know COVID and that there's an outbreak in the world right now, and we need to stay vexed we'll get updated with our vaccine so that we can you know where if it does come on shore we're prepared for it so how yeah. many how many cases have julie been... would you would you like to add to that please yeah julie so um the connections here um are not so good. So, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, it was just a period of time, and how the the uh, local community have justified you being in house arrest for this such long period. The only thing we know is that um, we're on house arrest until we comply. That's all that's been given to us. So, nothing more I can say from there. <laughs> how does that make you both? How does that make you both feel? So we're having, just um, having that pressure on you. How does that feel? On on all levels, no, it's it's not good. You know, uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually, um, it's it's really draining, and it's um, it's affecting both uh, all our families and our kids. Uh, we're we're just praying for for a breakthrough. Yeah. That um, you know, the people of this nation, especially the leaders, um, they will start. Um, they will change their um, their minds. Yeah? They will um, look out for the for the best for everyone, not just the vaccinated, but the unvaxxed as well. Because we have to we have to protect ourselves as well. The unvaccinated, we you know they can't just put us in a in a in a house and and just worry about the, the vaccinated. We have to prepare ourselves as well for in case there will be a case on the island because at the moment there's no case. Yeah, I was about to ask you how many cases there have been over the nine months. Have there been any over the nine months? No. There's no, no case on the island. Wow. Okay. Uh, what do you both feel about... Uh, what do you both feel about the New Zealand government and uh, Ross Ardern, Jacinda Ardern and their involvement uh, with this situation? Julie, did you hear the question? I can I can start answering. Yeah, um, Ross Ardern. Yeah, I'll just um, mention something about Ross Ardern. He's he has tried 
uh, numerous times to uh, reach out to the to the leaders of this nation to that it, this shouldn't be happening to us and you know he's advised them to let us out but um i don't know why it's they're taking long to to change their mind but he has been trying to tell them from day one that we shouldn't be locked up like this so Previously, has the New Zealand government had authority over the uh, leadership of Tokelau with regard to important decisions like this? Uh, look, Jason, I, I think, to be fair, the question is quite broad and, and, and it involves so many um, different facets of, you know, of any given society. I mean, the legal system, the, the, the health department, um, but... Um, that is a question that must be must be asked, you know, especially as, as New Zealand is and New Zealand is a caretaker of a of a territory. Um, yeah, they can defend themselves by saying that Tokelau was given the freedom to make their own decisions, but you know, given that there are no COVID cases and there has never been any, um, and, and, and the world and the rest of the world, especially neighboring countries, have dropped a lot of their mandates and have relaxed um, a lot of restrictions. Um, we're going in the other direction and, and, and New Zealand is turning a blind eye to that. So I thank you and other journalists that have uh, reached out to us as well. And you have been reaching out for ever since the start of this. And we have, we have sorry, I just need to bring that out as well. Um, we need to acknowledge that we have been staying humble about, you know, this whole situation. And we've, we've declined a lot of um, journalists that, that have been trying to get our story out there. Um, but because now that our children is, is, is our children are involved, that's, that's, that's why we're, we need to start speaking out now, Ni, because because as a mother, as a parent, I have a responsibility to to my children. I, I will not subject them to something that I did not want to, to put into my body as well. Um, but at the same time, um, I also am mindful of the fact that there are people that will say, well, you're selfish. What about the rest of us? You know, hey, we, we, we considered that right from the get-go. That's why we were humble about this whole thing for nine months. You know, but given the world has dropped their re a lot of mandates, as like I said, and I will repeat again, um, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense for us to be hitting the, the other way um, when everybody else is, is moving forward and having to accept to live with COVID. I'm sorry, I think I've just answered like your last three questions. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> that one question, so yeah. Do you think that, do you think that it's more a localised issue with your Tokelau leadership that they're afraid of a spread in their community. Would that be a good summary? Or do you think the New Zealand government have been influencing them? You know, we can we can make all sorts of um, stipulations from, from this whole thing, but um, as I mentioned to the to the other journalist, I um, I I personally reckon that this is this is colonialism still seeping through our communities without us um, really recognizing it, you know, um, because of our humble culture and the humble people that we are, we, you know, the, um, I do recognize New Zealand as, you know, using us to that effect to carry out their political interests or agenda, however you, term, you want to term it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate both of your time today and I wish you all the very best. We're thinking of you and we will continue to uh, cover this. And thanks both of you for your time today. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much for reaching out.